Now on CNET Central... From football to boxing, the Internet's all the rage. It's a high-tech blitz, and we'll tell you how to find it. Welcome to the City Wide Web. We'll tell you about the latest trend in navigating the global digital village. ROM. CD-ROM. We'll give you a peek at the newest gadget for a 007 fan's arsenal. Also, John C. Dvorak reviews new home improvement software, and Justin Gunn explains spam. Plus, hands-on demos, the best of the web, and all the news of the digital world, right now on CNET Central. From the number one on-air and online information source for the digital age, this is CNET Central. Hi, I'm Richard Hart. And I'm Gina St. John. Welcome to CNET Central. Everyone, it seems, understands the language of sports. The thrill of victory, the agony of defeat spans the globe regardless of race or culture. So it's no surprise then that the marriage of sports and the web is one of the greatest success stories of the internet. It began simply enough with up-to-the-minute stats. We got scores when we wanted them in photos, but the online action is only beginning to heat up, and there's a new big league interactive blitz on the way. Although it hasn't eclipsed the real thing, Sports Online has already scored big with millions of fans. From the established to the extreme, from the famous to the fantasy, from the stats to the chats, the internet has become the ultimate sports paradise. In fact, sports sites are some of the few that are successfully charging for information on the net. Sportsline's mix of free and pay content draws 5 million hits a day. But the king of the sports sites, ESPN Sports Zone, attracts more than three times that number. While the two heavyweight sports sites slug it out, there are always new challengers waiting on the bench. And no big event goes unnoticed. Last month's Tyson-Holyfield fight was staged both in the ring and in cyberspace. From the frivolous to in the ring with Tyson in 3D, Showtime went for an interactive TKO with its state-of-the-art website. As the fights begin, we enable the website to receive a uh, voting uh, live. Another new twist in grudge matches happens every week at NFL.com with its cyberspace showdown. Every Tuesday night, we have the two opposing quarterbacks who are going to meet on the field on Sunday. Only they're meeting for the first time in cyberspace. Jerry Rice and Emmett Smith um, have enjoyed it very much. But it may be ABC with its Monday Night Football that's making the hardest interactive blitz. Not only can you get real-time scores and stats at their website, but with the right software and computer, you can drop into a virtual 3D sports world with other fans using cutting-edge technology from online. You can create your own cyber character and use your own voice for your own color commentary. Welcome to Monday Night Football Live. The folks at Monday Night Football have developed a special CD-ROM version of the weekly face-off that uses the Internet to connect players across the country. You can get out there and challenge anybody else in the country um, to play that game with those two teams that are going to be in the Monday Night Football game. And then each week we'll pick a winner from that. And you never know who might show up on the other end of the modem. We found former NFL rivals Floyd Little and Daryl LaMonica getting ready for a little mouse-to-mouse -mouse contact. I think that's exceptional, the fact that I can find one of my former enemy, hook him up, yes! and play a game. Yes! But top honors for the ultimate in interactive sports right now probably has to go to NBC. Each week, they're broadcasting a game using intercast technology, which combines your standard TV version of the game with lots of real-time information and statistics that come to your computer as web pages. You watch the game and grab the stats you want. For sports fanatics, it's a glimpse of what lies ahead as TV and the Internet team up for a new level of interactivity. Basically, to turn you into your own TV producer. Um, I don't think everyone wants to experience a game that way, but there is a certain kind of fan who simply can't get enough. Cool as it is, not everyone can take advantage of intercasting yet. For starters, you'll need a special intercast decoder board and a Pentium-powered PC. But if you want to know more about sports online or you want to check out some of those sites, you'll find it all at our site, CNET.com.
The Internet has put vast amounts of information at our fingertips, and one of the biggest challenges continues to be to find the stuff you really want. You know, the kinds of goods and services you use every day. Well, reporter Hari Srinivasan is here to tell us about a new trend that may solve that problem. That's right, Gina. We already have the World Wide Web, but the idea here is to create little city-wide or region-wide webs. These are little corners of the net where everything shares some common geography and gets a local spin. Try looking up a pizza place online, and although you might find them from coast to coast, the one on the corner probably won't be on that list. It's almost overwhelming that you can get so much information, you know, so easily. Besides being a web surfer, Todd Parent is the manager of Extreme Pizza in San Francisco. And although he realizes the Internet is a great place to lure hungry customers, he's choosing a slightly different approach than building his own homepage. Total oh, is 293, please. He's one of hundreds of small businesses that are choosing localized web services to get their message across on a smaller scale than the world at large. People will be able to find us as opposed to, you know, us having to get our name out there. The City Search Group in San Francisco will design him a presence on the web for free and charge him a monthly fee to target a crowd surfing mostly in his area. A restaurant can have things like pictures of the interior and a detailed menu posted online, along with a map of just how far it is from where you live. But it's not just about putting up web pages, though. City Search is trying to create virtual communities online by giving nonprofit organizations a free presence on their service. To date, the Internet has really only catered to the 5% that could afford building a website or what have you. And our vision is to be comprehensive throughout an entire community and let everybody get on. Who knows better about what's on the web than the search engines? One of the most famous, Yahoo, has decided to take their categorizing expertise and put it to work on a smaller scale, like New York, Los Angeles, and the Bay Area. One of the things Yahoo does best through its directory format is take a ton of different sites and organize it in a way that people can pretty quickly find what they want in the context that they want it. Links to traffic cams are just a few of the goodies Yahoo is bundling into these communities. We also add beyond links. We have uh, bulletin boards, we have classifieds, we have yellow pages, we have local news feeds, weather information, local stock quotes. So we have a lot of value added information. They aren't the only search engines in this race. Excite is pushing the same idea through their project called CityNet. You can not only see a picture of Pike Place Market in Seattle, but hear it too. Another major search engine recently launched their effort into the regional web game with City Guide. Covering more than 400 cities around the U.S., Lycos hopes to be the surfer's choice for local information from Rockford to Raleigh. They feature everything from links to local hotspots to local news and telecast weather, just in case you're planning to drop by. Just like any other group of businesses, a few of these companies will find it profitable to keep offering these services, but others won't. But the idea will probably stick around in some form or another. Well, if you're looking for more help in finding your way around the web, check out Search.com. It's a one-stop spot for all the popular search engines and tons of useful information. Stay with us, because just ahead, David Letterman goes online, the web speeds up, and all the news of the digital world. And multimedia handyman John C. Dvorak inspects the latest in home improvement discs. In honor of World AIDS Day, the Names Project Foundation has put the AIDS quilt at the fingertips of America Online members. Forty-eight panels of the quilt can now be seen on AOL, along with biographical information about each person memorialized. AOL will have the full quilt eventually, with all 40,000 six-by-three-foot panels in memory of the 70,000 people lost to AIDS. Also new to AOL is an interactive Late Show with David Letterman site. Hi, it's me, Dave. Guess what? I've been reading your mail. You can log on to the night's top 10, tap the top 10 archives, or pen your own 10. You can play daily games, design your own sandwich for Rupert G's Hello Deli, and sign up for a stupid human trick in your own town, then post a picture as proof of completion. One more free email service is online this week, just as another free service goes under. 
The new net address service is now available, touting user-friendly email at no charge with automatic sorting and other perks. Like competitors Juno and Hotmail, net address is supported by advertising on each letter. Another free emailer, Freemark, announced this week it's suspending operations after failing to raise enough capital to grow its subscriber base. Freemark had only 20,000 subscribers compared with Juno's half million. Mac clone maker Power Computing is now offering a non-Mac operating system with its new machines. The B operating system will be bundled as a separate CD-ROM with all Power Computing's Mac clones starting in 97. The BOS is a symmetrical multiprocessor system, meaning it's faster by processing several operations simultaneously. It also offers protected memory and object-oriented design. The web's about to be blazing fast with a new net accelerator that should let you surf five times faster. Set to debut later this month, the new software is called Blaze by Datalytics Incorporated. Blaze compresses and encapsulates information to speed up downloading while reading ahead and prefetching web pages the user is likely to visit. Blaze is expected to sell for 80 to 100 bucks and should hit the web mid-month. Thanks, Richard. Now, spam is one of those terms we often throw about here, sometimes without explaining exactly what it means. But if you're confused, don't worry, because it's time for this week's Fact File. And here to help us out is Justin Gunn with his favorite dish, Spam. Well, thank you, Gina. And actually, that's what the Fact File is all about, answering frequently asked questions sent in by our viewers. And we got several this week, like this one from Mark Wilkinson, looking for an explanation of Spam. Not the luncheon meat, the digital spam. And spam is actually the digital equivalent of junk mail. Just as you don't like getting stacks of coupons, ads, and catalogs in your real mailbox, it's certainly annoying to check your email and find a stack of messages from someone or some company trying to sell you something. Oh, but technology does march on, and the low cost and ease of email has certainly not been overlooked by direct marketers. So what can you do about all this? Well, just like with real junk mail, the easiest thing to do is simply throw it away. However, most email programs allow you to filter messages into different mailboxes. So if you've been routinely pestered by some pesky spammer, simply create a filter for any message coming from that address to automatically be placed into a special mailbox. Or better yet, set your filter to throw it directly into the trash can. Now, if I could just get my real mailman to offer this service, my life would be a whole lot easier. Now, if you've got a question that you'd like us to answer, we want to hear from you, and here's where to send it. By email to factfile at cnet.com or through regular old snail mail to the fact file at 150 Chestnut Street, San Francisco, California, 94111. And if you want to know more about spamming and those email filters I talked about, head on over to cnet.com, and you can also get those fact file addresses and each week's question and answer. Don't go away. When we come back... Don't be scared, we're going to show you some scary sights on the best of the web. And 007 is shaken, not stirred, in a new disc for Bond fans. Bond. James Bond. Hey, if you want to be the first to get the CNET inside word every week, you've got to get Digital Dispatch. It's our free email newsletter, the ultimate behind-the-scenes guide to the ultimate on-air, online source in the digital age. All you have to do is send email to dispatch at cnet.com. In the body of the letter, type subscribe and your email address. The Best of the Web is brought to you by MCI1. Life just got simpler. Ghouls, goblins, and ghost stories. You can find some pretty scary things on the internet, and we've got three websites with an element of the macabre to them. It's all in this week's Best of the Web. First, we take a tour with the Crypt Keeper as we lurk through the creepy crevices of the Tales from the Crypt. Welcome to the Crypt, a sight to die for. <laughs> Loaded with multimedia, you'll find all kinds of spooktacular goodies here, including scripts, clips, and photographs. Enter the Screaming Room for previews on the latest Crypt movies like this one from Bordello of Blood. For those who like to be scared, this is one terrific sight. And next, we visit a man who has created some terrifying tales of his own. It's the Stanley Kubrick Multimedia Film Guide. From his early films to his upcoming projects, get the inside scoop on Kubrick's 40-year film career. Delve into the digital archives for a look at such classic films as Clockwork Orange, 2001, and The Shining. If you're a Kubrick fan and have been wondering what he's been up to lately, this site can't be missed. 
From movie terror, we head to movie toys at the Trend Masters website. This site is packed with fun stuff from Tarzan to Gumby to Godzilla. And of course, there's always my favorite, the I Dream of Genie collection. There's also lots of interactive games. And for those who are getting ready for Halloween, you'll want to check out the ghoulish goodies at the Hallow Scream Gallery. For more on the best of the web, head on over to CNET.com, where we also visit a site devoted to the future of VRML web design and a Generation X e-zine. Of course, more people than ever are enjoying the best of the web these days on laptops and notebooks because the computers are getting lighter and the batteries better. But as Desmond Crisis has found out in CNET's labs this week, there are other innovations, too. Yeah, that's right. Now, this one is from Sharp. This one's called the Wide Note. And they went with that 16 by 9 aspect ratio, or the advanced TV aspect ratio. This is wide. Now, what good does that mean to me as the owner of this computer? Well, what you can do here is tile your documents next to each other or use your desktop. Two windows at the same time. Yeah, that's right. So you can take some notes while you browse. And that is a very sharp, bright display, I might add, too. Yeah, so good. how much is it? This one is right around thirty-four ninety-nine. That's for the high-end version, but there's also a lower-end version for a little bit less. I like that, but I like this one better here. This is from Panasonic, and Desmond tells us that there is a CD-ROM in here, but it's more than just a CD-ROM player. Yeah, that's right, because when you pop the CD-ROM out, you can add this, and this is the pocket disc. Okay. There you go. Now, this is a rewritable, recordable optical, so I can use this over and over again. Yeah, and it's a lot like a CD, so you just pop it in here. And it uses the same slot that the CD does. Yeah, that's ah. right. So how much money does this add to the cost of the computer? Adds about 650 bucks, but it's 650 megs of removable media that you can take with you. And each subsequent cartridge is cheaper, too. Now, mm -hmm. I also know that one of the leading causes of people having it's their laptops stolen is they carry them around in briefcases that say, hey, I'm a laptop. Yeah, and that's what this thing solved. Now, this is the Respect Lap Pack. It's basically a complete mobile workstation. It has, even has a wrist pad in it. It's got a pocket for just about everything. And... It's incredibly fashionable. Yeah, it even has a pocket for a cell phone to go really mobile. It has a pocket for a pager. Lots of cool stuff inside, but the best thing I like is the design. Yeah, check this check out. Check this out. From respect, about 98 bucks, and by this time next year, everybody will be wearing one of these. We're giving the reasons to look to your computer before you work on your house. We have some home improvement titles, and the man to uh, tell us what he thinks is our own handyman of multimedia, John C. Dvorak. Yeah, we're going to hammer out some reviews this week. Uh-huh. Our first one is Microsoft's complete do-it-yourself guide. What about it? Well, you know, Microsoft's got themselves into every other part of the computer business software-wise. Why not home improvement? Surprisingly enough, this is a pretty good disc. The complete do-it-yourself guide will teach you the nuts and bolts of fixing up your home from hot water heating to central air conditioning. Take a guided tour as you learn how your house works. Wondering how to control household fungus? This disc will show you how to do it. And check out the tools and maintenance section and discover the difference between a strap wrench and the chain wrench. My favorite feature is the project reminder section. Add a yearly chore like checking the smoke detector, pick a month that needs to be done, and then the program will remind you when to do it. I give this a solid buy it. Okay. Like you can even crumple the box up and use it to clean drains. This thing's amazing. Uh, I don't know about that. I would like to know about this, the Home Improvement Encyclopedia, and it utilizes that new hybrid CD-ROM internet technology. Yeah, it's a fascinating disc, actually. Tim Allen, move over. The Home Improvement Encyclopedia will show you the way. From wiring a motion sensor to repairing a leaky faucet, this disc will help you with your home repair needs. You'll find animations on installing a phone plug and coaxial cable connectors, along with videos explaining how to recognize wood decay. This disc takes advantage of both mediums by integrating CD-ROM technology and Netscape's web browser. For instance, if fixing the bathroom toilet is out of your league, you can click on the web link section to find a plumber in your area. This is a try it. Okay. I think it's a good overall disc, but you need that internet connectivity to make it really happen. All right. Now, here's another one from Books That Work. It's called 3D Landscape. Now, if you'd like to do your exteriors and the landscape, is this worth the time and the money? You know, I think so. If you have a green thumb, you want to check out 3D Landscape. Choose from a plethora of landscape options. Trees, shrubs, walkways, even duck ponds and then create the design of your dreams. You're in control of everything from the placement of your house to the best place to barbecue hamburgers. There are helicopter views, top views, and 3D views. You'll find useful information on every kind of tree and plant imaginable. One of the coolest features is growth over time. Gauge what your plants and trees will look like after one year of growth or a hundred. If you have landscape aspirations, you'll want to check this disc out. I give this a buy it. Great. But not necessarily for beginners. I think you have to have some experience with landscaping to get the most out of this disc. Okay, well, we've had some good CD-ROMs and great reviews. Thanks so much, Thank John. Thank you. The 
internet has tons of information on thousands of sites. The problem is, it's hard to find what you need. A search engine is a tool that helps you find what you need. The problem is, there are hundreds of search engines. The solution is search.com, more than 250 search engines all in one place. Whether you're looking for a hotel in Hong Kong or a movie playing in your neighborhood, it's all here. Search.com, more than 250 search engines. Why choose one when you can have them all? Goldfinger, The Spy Who Loved Me, Octopussy, James Bond films have left us at the edge of our seats and wanting more for more than 34 years. Well, 007 is back for another mission, and this time, he's going inside your PC. It's the release of the ultimate James Bond, an interactive dossier, and we've got a sneak peek. If you're a James Bond fan, you definitely have something to celebrate. Bond. James Bond. That's right. It's the return of your favorite super spy, Agent 007. But instead of watching him do all those death-defying stunts on the silver screen, you can now find them on your computer screen in a brand new CD-ROM. This multimedia retrospective spans over 30 years of the best Bond films. From Dr. No to Thunderball to Goldeneye, you'll find photos, videos, and some classic never-before-seen material. And dive into the dis digital archives for a look at the world's most beautiful women, the most vile villains, and of course, the coolest high-tech gadgets from 17 James Bond films. There's also a trivia challenge for diehards and behind-the-scenes profiles with all five actors who've played James Bond over the years. So for those looking for some fun and excitement out of their PC, you'll find this is one explosive disc. Due out in early November, the ultimate James Bond will sell for about 40 bucks and will run on a PC. The disc will also come bundled with a golden eye video, an extra bonus for Bond fans. And we have an extra bonus for CNET fans. Yes, you've been asking for them. We now have CNET t-shirts, hats, and mugs available online. Check it out at store.cnet.com. And for a link to the store or any information and everything you've seen on this show, there's still only one site to remember, CNET.